evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Esther B. Griswold Theater for the Performing Arts. And welcome to our studio production of Euripides' Medea. We're very excited, as this is our first incarnation of a studio production with seating on stage. Um, thank you so much for supporting the arts at AIC. Our play runs 45 minutes without an intermission. Thank you so much. Enjoy the show. I wish the longship Argo had never passed that perilous channel between the Simplegades. I wish the pines that made her mast and her oar still waved in on Mount Pelion, and the great fish hawks still nested in them. And the great adventures had never voyaged into the Asian sunrise for the morning of the Golden Fleece. For then, my mistress Medea would have never seen Jason, nor loved, nor saved him nor came with him into this country filled with smiling, chattering Greeks and the roofs of Corinth for which I see evil hang like a cloud. For she is not meek, but fierce, and the daughter of a king. Yet at first all went well. Now all is changed. All is black hatred. He calls this old bond a barbarian mating, not a Greek marriage. And he's gone off and married the yellow-haired child of Creon, the ruler here. Death! Death is my wish for myself, my enemies, my children! Destruction! That's the word! Grind, crush, burn! Destruction! <laughs> oh, this is my terror to hear her always harking at the children. Oh, unhappy one, they're not to blame. If any god hears me, let me die. Rotten, rotten, rotten. Death is the only water to wash this dirt. Oh, it's a bad thing to be born of a high race, unruled yet ruling many. I say, commoners are happier. They can lie low. What do you want? I hear her crying again. It is dreadful. She is beautiful and deep in grief. We couldn't help coming. We are friends of this house, and its trouble hurts us. You are right, friends. This is no longer a home. It's a house of grief and of weeping. She boasts of that. She does not know what she is saying. Poisons! Death magic, the sharp sword, the hip rope! Poisons! Death! Death! 
Oh, she is coming. Mark your words, a soft music. Oh, my dear, my poor child. They say she's dangerous. Look at her eyes. She is a witch, but not evil. She can make old men young again. She did it for Jason's father. All of the people of her country are witches. They know of drugs and magic. They're all savages, but they have a wild wisdom. Poor soul. Hasn't helped this one much. I will look at the light of the sun this last time. I wish from that blue sky the white wolf of lightning would leap, burst my skull and my brain, and like a burning flame cling to these breasts and... Someone is here. I did not know I had visitors. Women of Corinth. I am a set of heaven. I am not my mother. I am not my father. I am not my sister. I am not my brother. I am a separate person. This is my body. These are my thoughts. This is my mouth. My voice. These are my words. I speak for myself. If anything has been spoken too loudly here, Consider that I believed I was alone and I have some provocation. You've come. Let me suppose with love and sympathy to parent my sorrow. I. I will show my heart to you. You know that Jason, my lord, has left me and made a second marriage with the young child of power and wealth. I, too, was a child of power, but not in this country. And I spent my power for love of Jason. I poured it out before him like water. I made him drink it like wine. I gave him success and fame. I saved him not once, many times. You may have heard what I did for him. I cheated my father for him. I killed my brother to save him. I made my own land to hate me forever. And he has left me and made a second marriage with Creon's daughter to enjoy her fortunes and to put aside her soft yellow hair and kiss her young mouth. She is terrible, stone with stone eyes. Look, the foam flake on her lip that flickers with her breathing. She is pitiable. She is under great injuries. I do not know what other woman. I do not know how much a Greek woman will endure. The people of my race are rash and intemperate. But I want simply to die. But Jason is not to smile over his bride over my tomb nor the great man Creon hang wreaths and make a feast day in Corinth, or let the wreaths be blinding fire and the songs a high wailing and the wine blood. There are evils that cannot be cured by evil. Patient remains and the gods watch all. Let them watch my enemies go down in blood. <coughs> Medea, beware. Some great person is coming. It is Creon himself. He is dark with anger, oh my lady. Bend in this wind and not be broken. You have admirers, I see. Abate your pride. These people will not be with you where you are going. Medea, woman of the stone, forehead and the hate-filled eyes, I have made my decision. I have decided that you must leave this land at once and go into banishment, you with your children. I intend to remove a root of disturbance out of the soil of Corinth. I am here to see to it. I will not return home until it is done. Oh, the children, my lord. What are you muttering? Nothing. I am praying to my gods for wisdom and you for mercy. My sons are still very young, Creon. You know what exile means. Why must I be cast? I will tell you frankly, because you nourish rancorous ill will towards persons whom I intend to protect, I send you out before you've time to do harm here. And you are notorious for occult knowledge, sorcery, poisons, magic. Men say you can even sing down the moon from heaven and to make the holy stars to falter and run backward against the purpose and current of nature. Ha! As to that I know not. I know you are dangerous. You threaten my daughter. You have to go. But I wish her well, my lord. 
I wish her all happiness. I hope that Jason is as kind to her as to me. That is your wish! I misspoke. I thought of old days. I acknowledge, Medea, that you have cause for some grief. I all the more must protect against your dark wisdom and bitter heart. You misjudge me cruelly. It is true that I have some knowledge of drugs and medicines. I can sometimes cure sickness. Is that a crime? These dark rumors, my lord, are only the noise of popular gratitude. You may have observed it often. If any person knows a little more than the common man, the people suspect him. If it brings a new talent, how promptly the hateful whispers begin. But you are not a common man, Lord of Corinth. You will not fear knowledge. No, no change my decision. I want to see you leave this house and the city in not much time. Move quickly, gather your things and go. I pity you, Medea, but you must go. You pity me. You pity me. I want doors off, pity or warn from Charles. May God who hears me. We shall see in the end who's to be pitied. This is good. This is what I desire. Unmask the livid face of your hatred and I see whom I deal with. Serpent and wolf. A wolf from Asia. I'd rather you rage now than do harm later. Now, Medea, out of here before my men drive you out. You see a woman driven half mad with sorrow laboring to save her children. No wolf, my lord. And though I was born in far off Asia, call that misfortune, not vice. And the races of Asia are too human, just as the Greeks are. And we have hearts that are as brittle. If you hurt us, we cry. And we have children, sir, as the Greeks do. And you have a daughter, sir. Yes! And I'll keep her safe of your female hatred. Therefore, I send you out of this land. <laughs> it is not true. I am not jealous of her. I never hated her. Jealous for the sake of Jason? I am far past wanting Jason, my lord. You took him and gave him to her. And I will say you did well, wisely perhaps. Your daughter is loved by all. She is beautiful. If I were near her, I would soon love her. Trust you or not, you are going out of this country, Medea. What I decide is fixed. It is like the firm rocks of Acrocorinth, which neither earthquake can move, nor flood of tears melt. Make ready quickly. I have a guest in my house. I should return to him. Oh, what guest? Oh, my lady, ask him if friendly he might be of refuge to us in bitter exile. Your will is granite. But even on the harsh face of a granite mountain, some flowers of mercy may grow in season. Have mercy on my son's creon, though there is none for me. How long, woman? This is decided, done, finished. Sire, grant me a few hours in, just one day to prepare in, one day to prepare before I have to leave Corinth forever. What? No, I told you. The day's today, Medea, this day, and the hour is now. There are no flowers on this mountain. Not one violet, not one anemone. Your face, my lord, is like flint. But if I could find the right words, if some god could lend me a touch of eloquence, I'd show you my heart. I'd lift it out of my breast and turn it over in my hands. And you see how pure it is of any harm or malice towards you or your household. Look at it. Not one speck. Look, my lord. They say that mercy is a jewel of kings. I am praying to you as to one of the gods. Do not destroy us utterly. To go out of here with no refuge, nothing prepared is plain death. I would rather kill myself quickly in here. If I could just go to the strolling beggars or the slaves and ask where to go, how to live, and to collect a few means, some gold things, a few things, just to trade for goats and bread, well, we shall watch you as a hawk does a viper. What harm could you do on the tail of one day? A ruler ought to be ruthless, but I am not. 
I'm a fool. In my own eyes, whatever the world may think, I can be gruff with warriors. A woman weeping floods me off course. Take it then. Make your preparations. But if tomorrow's sun shines on you here, my dear, you die. Enough words. Thank me not. I want my hands washed of this business. I will thank you. And the whole world will hear of it! I have seen this man arrogant. I have walked and heard him. I am of Corinth, and I say Corinth is not well ruled. The city where a woman, even a foreigner, suffers unjustly under the rods of powers. It is not well ruled. Unhappy, my dear, what haven, what sanctuary, where will you wander? Which of the gods, my dear, drives you through the waves of woe, the mooring broken, the hostard and the anchor head, hopeless from harbor? My dreams draw blood from old sores. These stains and scars are mine. This is my space. I am not moving. This man, this barking dog, this gold fool. Gods of my father's country. You saw me low on my knees before that great dog of Creon. Humble holding my heart out in my hands for a dog to bite. Break these dogs' teeth! Women, it is a bitter thing to be a woman. A woman is weak for warfare. She must use cunning. Men boast of their battles, and I tell you this, and we know it. It is easier to stand in the front line three times in the stabbing fury than to bear one child. And a woman, they say, can only do good in childbirth. And maybe so. But she can do evil. She can do evil. I wept for that tall dog. I wept my tears for him. I degraded my knees to him. I golden flattered him. Oh, triple fool, he has given me all that I needed, a little space, a little time of space. Death is dearer to me than I am now. But if by sunset the world has not turned and turned sharp too, let your dog Creon send two or three slaves to kill me and a cord to strangle my neck. I'll stretch my neck out to it. I see an eye hole, a pinpoint of light. There are many doors in which painful death can glide in and catch. Which one? Which one? Look, who is coming? I see the sunlight glitter on Len's head. With Jason. Jason, who should have been Medea's dearest protector, but instead her greatest enemy. What have you here? You women clustered like buzzing bees at the hive door. Where's Medea? There, mourning for what you have done. Huh? What she has done? Not I, not by my will. Her and my sons are exiled. Is there another dog here? So, Medea, you have once more affronted and insulted the head of Corinth. This is not the first time I've seen what a fool anger is. You might have lived here happily, secure and honored. I hoped you would by being just a little decently respectful toward those in power. Instead, you have to go mad with anger. To me, it matters little what you say about me, but rulers are sensitive. Time and again, I've smoothed down Creon's indignation. Then you, like a mad woman, like a possessed imbecile, wag your head and let the words flow again. You never cease from speaking evil against him and his family. So now, you've got it. Call yourself lucky, Medea, not to get worse than exile. In spite of all this, I have your interests at heart, and I'm here to help you. Exile's a bitter business. I want to make some provision for you. I wish you no harm, although you hate me. And for the children, my sons, our sons, you might have been decent enough to have thought of our sons. 
Did you consider them when you betrayed this house? Certainly I considered them. It was my hope that they would grow up here. And I, having married power, could protect and favor them. And if perhaps I become Dynast of Corinth, which is Creon's desire, then our sons could have been a king's sons. But unfortunately, I must look forward to younger children. No! It's a no. It is likely that something might happen to the bride in the marriage. Nothing will happen. But evidently, Creon is right to be rid of you. Have you finished now? I thought I would let you spread out your shamelessness before these women. The way a Tyrian traitor unrolls his rare fabrics. Do you like it, ladies? It is a daughter's husband. It is a brave person. It has got up its courage, guarded by spears who come and look me in the face. There are some things that ought to be remembered by you and me. That day when we were in the blue sea, flying through Hellespont into Greek sea, and the great herald's shoulders sang at the oars, and those birds flying through the foam. That day was too fine, I suppose, for Creon's daughter's man to remember. But you might remember whether I cheated my father for you, and tamed the fire-breathing bulls, and saved your life in the field of the teeth, and got you the golden fleece, and fled with you, and killed my brother when he tried to pursue us, making me abominable in my own land. I see, Medea. You have been a very careful merchant of benefits. You forget none. You keep a strict reckoning. But some things I have done for you ought to be in the books too. As, for example, when I took you out of the dirt and superstition of the Asiatic Caucasus into the rational sunlight of Greece and the marble musics of Greek temples, is that no benefit? And finally, as to those acts of service you so loudly boast, to whom do I thank for them? I thank divine Venus, the goddess who makes girls fall in love. You did it because you had to do them. Venus compelled you. I enjoy her favor. A man dares things, you know. He makes his adventures in the cold eye of death. If the gods care for him, they appoint an instrument to save him. If not, he dies. You were that instrument. Here it is, the lowest, the obscene dregs, the slime and the loathing, the mouthy bottom of the bottomless cup, the scoundrels provoking the gods. You had better go, Jason. Vulgarity is a contagious disease, and what I can do is spit at you like a peasant or curse at you like a drunken slave. You had better take yourself back to little Kruja. I came to save and help you if possible. I don't need your help. Go! Go! If I can see my boys... Go quickly. You're the regret then. You! you! Who makes me believe we are lovers. You! you! Who lets me pretend. You! Who reminds me of myself. You! Who controls me. You! My accomplice. You! Who tells me to lie. You! Who makes me believe we're still in the first moment. You! Who makes me believe we're forever in love. Forever in love. This is it. Loathing is all. This flesh he has touched and fouled. These hands that wrought for him. These knees that ran his errands. This body he has touched to make children what they call love. If I could rip away the flesh, the children, the memory. God, keep me from fire and the hunger of the sword. Save me from the hateful sea and the jagged lightning and the violence of love. A little love is a joy in the house. A little fire is against frost and darkness. A great love is a fire that burns the beams of the roof, the doorposts are flaming and the house falls. A great love is a lion in the cattle pen. The herd goes mad, the heifer runs bawling, and the claws are in their flame. Too much love is an armed robber in the treasury. He has killed the guard and he walks in blood. And now I see the black end, the end of a great love, and God save me from it! The unburied horror, the unbridled hatred, the 
vultures tearing a corpse. God keep me clean of those evil beaks. What is she doing? That woman, staring like stone, staring. Oh, she has moved now. Annihilation. The word is pure music. Annihilation. To annihilate the past is not possible, but the fruit of the present can be nipped off. White bones upon a seashore. Bones have no eyes, how can they weep? Better to be bones across a black seashore. But oh, that's not enough. Corinth must howl first. God favor cities of the Greek world. Fortunate those that dwell in them, happy that behold them. How could one wish to die? How could that woman be drowned in sorrow and bewildered with hatred? For only to be alive and to see the light is beautiful. Only to see the light, to see the blade of a young grass or a grey face of a stone. As you say, what a, mer what a merely privilege it is to be alive. And how foolish it would be to spend the one day that remains to me, at least in Corinth, on tears and hatred. Rather, I should rejoice, sing, and give gifts. And as to my enemies, I will be reconciled with them. Is it late? The light darkens. Is it evening? No, no cloud. I hope for thunder. Let the sky rage. My gifts will shine the brighter. Listen, on old woman. Go to Jason and tell him. Tell him, tell him that I'm sick of weary and tired of evil. I wish for peace. I wish to give precious gifts to that pale girl whom he has married. Tell him to come and take the things and to kiss his sons before we go into exile forever. Tell him, go speedily, quickly. I'll go, I'll run. Let me pass, please. But I am terrified. Pray to the woman's, pray to the God's woman to keep evil birds from our hearts. These are the gifts I'm giving to the young bride. This gold veil and this gold woven wreath. There's nothing like them in the entire world, at least the Western world. The gods of the suns gave it to my father, and I have kept it in this deep chest for some high occasion, which has now come. I have great joy in giving these jewels to Creon's daughter, for it is in life to be glorious to one's friends and merciless to one's enemies. You know what a friend she has been to me. All Corinth knows. The slaves talk of it. The stones in the walls have watched and laughed. <laughs> See, it is alive. Gold is a living thing, such pure gold. And when her body has warmed it, oh, how it will shine. What keeps him? Oh, my lady, I have now but returned from him. He was beyond the gate when a monstrous thing had happened. A young mare broke from the chariot and tore her teeth into a stallion. He takes his time off. It is intolerable to sit and wait. Take these things into the house. Keep them for when I call. You say a mare attacked a stallion. She tore him cruelly. He was being led away by a black racer. The blood ran down his face. You're sure he's coming? You're sure? He said he would. Let him make haste then. Well, I have come. I tell you plainly, not for your sake, the children's. Your women says that you have your wits again and are willing to look beyond your own woes. It appears doubtful. Where are the boys? I have made inquiry. 
I can find Fosterage for them in Epidaurus or any of the other several cities that are Creon's friends. I'll visit them from time to time and watch that they are well kept. You mean... Take them from me! Be careful, Jason. I am not patient yet. I cannot smile when I'm the one who wore them. I love them, Jason. If you would keep them and take them and care for them here in Corinth, I might consent. Gladly, but they are exiled. In your own house. Gladly I do it, but you understand they are exiled as you are. Innocent for my rebellion, that's black. Forgive me, Jason, as I do you. Our acts are closing in on us, on me, I mean. Retribution is from the gods and it hurts our hearts. But you feel nothing, you fear nothing. Nothing can touch you. Do you love them? Huh? Certainly. The children? Certainly. I am their father. Oh, but I can't be certain of that. I must question you first, very deeply to the quick. If something were to happen to them, would you be grieved? Nothing will happen, Medea. If in my care, what's your mind on it? Oh, but I can't be certain. If they were bleeding, and their blood ran across the floor of the house or down the deep earth, would you be grieved? You have a sick mind. You know that, right? Obviously, I'd be grieved. Answer me! Yes. After I cut their killer in the red collops, I'd be grieved. Children, my sweet babies. Shh. I think he's afraid of your helmet, sir. What? What? You'll learn, my man, not to fear helmets. The enemy will run from yours when it comes time. And you, Captain, how would you like a horn-tipped bow to hunt rabbits with? Wolves, I mean. Don't give them to him, Medea. If you do, it will ache forever. Be silent. Look at him. He loves them all. Therefore, they're not going to that city, but a darker city where no games are played, no music is heard. Do I look like a cow lowing after the calf? Or a bitch with pups licking the hand that struck her? Watch and see. Watch this man, women. He is going to weep. And I think he is going to see weep so much blood, more than I have wept. Jason, are they very dear to you? I think I am satisfied that you love them. These two young heroes? God's hand, my dear. What is it? What is the matter? Nothing. It is hard to let them go. Are they very sweet to you? Do you love them dearly? This I have thought of. You shall take them to nail before Creon's daughter, your wife, and ask her to ask her father whether they can stay here in Corinth. Is it well thought of? Will she listen to us? Why, if I ask it, she'll never refuse it. And you're right, she can rule Creon. Bring those things. Dear ones, dear little falcons, pawns of my agony, go ask that restless girl of her bitter charity whether she will let you nest here until your wings had fledged while far away your mother flies the dark city. I'm sorry for you. Parting is hard. I can bear it and worse too. Here are the things. Be careful. Do not hold them by the gold they might tarnish. With such jewels and such a husband, ah, she is rising and my sunset falling. I hope to a red sunset. This is a pretty gold reef, isn't it? It looks like fire. Rejoice, woman! 
woman. The gifts are given, the bait is laid. The great gods roll their eyes over Creon's house and quietly smile. No rat nor coney would creep into the undisguising traps that take the proud race of man. <laughs> they are foolish. They'll believe anything. I was foolish once too. And now I shall triumph. It would be better for you, Medea, if the earth opened her jaws and took you down into darkness. But the one thing you cannot do, for you will not, you will not hurt your own children, though wrath like plague boils. How can that girl's death slake me? I am sick with terror. I'll run to the palace. I'll warn them. Will you? Go! Go if you will! My god and goddesses are doing these things and you cannot prevent them. But you could easily fall into the same fire. I am afraid to go. You are wise. Anyone standing between me and my justice will reap what no man wants. What news, Tudor? Rejoice, Medea. I bring you good news. The princess graciously received your presence and smiled. It is peace between you. She has welcomed the little boys. They are safe from exile. Their father will be kept here if their father is joyful. Yes. All of Creon's house is well pleased. When we first went in, the service women came and hugged the children. It is rumored to all the household that you and Jason were at peace again. Like the word of victory. Where's Medea? What has happened? What horror drives you? A spear's hunting behind you? He tried to save her, and he died. Old friend. Oh, my eyes are blistered, my throat's like a dry straw. There was a long mirror, and when her eyes saw it... You are not suffering. You saw it, you did not feel it speak plainly. Her face went white. She staggered a few steps into the great throne chair. Then a serving woman began to call for water, thinking she had fainted, but saw the foam start up on her lips instead and the eyes rolling back, and she screamed instead. Some ran to fetch Creon, others ran after Jason, and that doomed girl, frightfully crying up, started from the throne chair. She was like a comet streamed fire. She tore at it, but it clung to her head. White hot flesh flaying the living bone. And then she fell on the floor, writhing. Creon flung himself on her, hoping to choke that rage of a flame. His own agony made him forget his daughters. They both lie there, eyeless, defaced, mittens of golden flesh mixed with molten gold. No, no, I finished. I have no more. I want all, how they died when you went away. Have mercy. You have told good news, old friend, well. I shall reward you. As for those people, their woes are not over. Mine are not, Jason's are not. Awake, Medea. Awake from this evil dream. Catch up your children and flee. Farther than Athens, farther than Thrace or, split, or Spain. Flee to the world end. Fire and death have done your bidding. Is it not? Is it not enough? Are you not fed full with evil? No! Loathing is endless. Hate is a bottomless cup I will pour and pour. Children, oh, my little ones, what was I dreaming? My babes, my own, I could never, never. I have a sword in the house. I can protect you.
soul. She has killed herself. Good. She never lacked courage. I will take my sons away to the far end of the earth and never speak of these things again. Is she lying in there? Honorable, at least in her death I might have known it. Well, answer. Death is here. Death is there, but you are both blind and deaf. How can I tell you? But the, ch the children are well? I do not know whether Medea lives or is dead. Open, open, open! Women, help me! Help me to break this bolt! Our shoulders? Go and find help! Come, I cannot go home until you have taken everything and understand. What feeble night bird overcome by misfortunes beats at my door? Can that be that great adventurer, the famous lord of seas and delight of women, the heir of Corinth, a drunkard on the dark doorsteps, have you not had enough? You have come to drink the last bitter drops. I will pour them for you. What is that stain on your hand? The wine I was pouring for you spilled on my hands. Dear were the little grapes that were crushed to make it. Dear were the vineyards. I came to kill you, Medea, like a caught beast, like a crawling viper. Give me my sons so that I may save them from Creon's men. I'll go quietly away. Sit there very quietly. I'll let you look at your sons. I knew it. I knew it already. No wild beast could have done it. I have done it because I loved you more than I love them. Mine is a triumph. Exalt and evil. Don't your fill have your glory. My heart's blood bought it. Enjoy it then. Only give me my boys, the little pitiful violated bodies, so that I may bury them in some kind place. No, they are mine. They are going with me. The chariot is in the gate. You had love and you betrayed it. Now of all men, you are the most utterly miserable. As I of women, and I a woman, a foreigner, alone against you and the might of Corinth, have met you throat for throat, evil for evil. I will go forth under the cold, despising weakness of the stars. Not me they scorn. Thank you.